I'm Sam from Cultaholic, and this is your lovely, lovely weekend edition of Bumper Wrestling News. I hope you're all having a wonderful Saturday. Let's have a look at all the headlines. WWE this week have made more than 60 releases. There's a bit of a change coming for WWE Raw next Monday. And Jeff Hardy has just teased Willow versus The Fiend. Let's start off with the news this week coming out of Stamford, Connecticut, that WWE has, at the back end of this past week, released several dozen employees. Now, most people at this point are aware of the releases of Gerald Briscoe, Mike Rotunda, and Sarah Stock, but it's now being reported by PW Insider that one of their sources has said up to 60 people were let go from the company. It's to be believed that a great deal of the people who have been let go were already furloughed due to the ongoing pandemic, uh, and most of the people that have been released have been released from areas of the company that are sort of dwindling in productivity because of the global situation. Areas like live event production. Now, I know that there were rumors floating around, I think, last week that WWE, after the pandemic is all said and done, they're going to be scaling down their live event calendars. So that may explain some of the releases if these staff were working on house show loops, but you still can't help but feel really, really sorry for them. It's just an awful situation to be in. WWE is built off a backbone of hardworking media professionals. They consistently deliver the biggest production values anywhere in the wrestling sphere. They're all pretty top tier individuals across the board. You have to be to work that hard and be so good at it. It just really sucks that times seem to be changing for the worst when it comes to live production and that these people are having to be scaled back, especially as the company is posting record profits. Just to play devil's advocate, from WWE standpoint, it does actually make a fair bit of sense if these individuals are working in areas that are being scaled back. There's no point in them keeping people employed when they could be working elsewhere and making more money. Similarly, the news about Mike Rotunda, Sarah Stock and Jerry Briscoe, who were a road agent, developmental trainer and talent scout respectively, you've got to feel for them because the wider situation in the world is pretty much making it impossible to do things like go and scout talent or be a road agent if they've got every road agent in one building. It's, it's, yeah... It's just really crap that this has come in at a time where WWE are posting record profits. I just immediately started thinking, well, could you not transition these people into various roles? Although I know some technical roles are very specific and very trained and you can only really do one thing in one area. Maybe they've already tried to move. I'm just speculating, but it's just a horrible situation all round. It seems at least that some of the releases have been handled very professionally, though. Jerry Briscoe taking to Twitter to say that he had a phone call from Vince. They had a conversation. There's no animosity he completely understood he's just very emotional about the whole thing our thoughts here at cultaholic go out to anybody who has been affected by this and you know they're all incredibly talented people and i'm sure that they're going to find either new jobs in different companies making a hell of a lot more money or you know vince will probably come back calling when they start opening the live event loop back up But either way, if there are any further developments, just keep it with us and we'll keep you updated. Now, so long as we've been watching wrestling on TV, the shows have had names. You can't just have live WWE wrestling uh, appear on, you know, the EPG whenever it's Raw or SmackDown. You need a gimmick, you need a hook, and you need it to look a certain way. And then sometimes you need to just make a wild change that absolutely nobody was anticipating. Enter 2020. That's right, a change is coming to your WWE schedule. Now, what are they doing? Are they changing the color of SmackDown to green? Are they bringing back the real green show, everybody's favorite, Velocity? It's not quite as dramatic as any of this, so I'm sorry if I'm getting your hopes up. On last night's SmackDown, WWE ran an advert for the upcoming episode of Raw. The logo was the same, the color was the same, the set was the same, the wrestlers were even the same. But what changed? Well, it's not just Monday Night Raw anymore. It's Monday Night Raw in your face. You know, on one hand, you might be going, why have they done this to my favorite wrestling show? But on the other hand, like me, you might be like, I, I, quite, I quite like it. But I don't think, as I said, it's going to be around for very long because you see Monday when Raw's on, you know what else starts? Monday Night Football across the entirety of the United States of America. So yeah, traditionally, ain't nobody fares well against the returning Monday Night Football. But if they go in there prepped as hard as they can, they've got a killer card. They've got a, like a strap line or a tagline, or whatever the hell you call it, attached to the name. They're making it really feel like a super card, a super show. I don't think that it's going to be something that sticks around, because it'd just get ridiculous, wouldn't it? But I'm quite enjoying this idea of, you know, when you do a super raw, give it a name. Give it, like, just a little name. 
I mean, they do it on IMDb for NXT, like NXT Season 3, Episode 5, The Retribution. It'll be like that. But just as a fun, hypothetical, and really, I mean it, serious answers only, I want to go through and I want to have a look at some of your ideas. If WWE were to get rid of Raw or SmackDown, what would you come up with to replace it? What are you going to call it? What's the colour going to be? And is there any special hook to it? Let me know below. I'm going to have a look through and I might give a cheeky little heart to a few that I really like. But yes, serious answers only, please. We might even make this a regular thing. Saturday Challenge. Next up, another change to WWE schedule, but this time it's pay-per-views. Hell in a Cell has moved date. So it was originally supposed to occur on November 1st, but instead PW Insider have reported that it's going to be taking place on the 25th of October. It feels like WWE are really going in pretty hard on pay-per-views during the lockdown era, or like at least sort of specials. I mean, Christ, we just had a back-to-back the other week, didn't we? But... Yeah, I I don't know what you guys think of Hell in a Cell in general. I, I think as a gimmick, it's incredible, but I think it's when it became a pay-per-view, it, it, it ran its course. I want Hell in a Cell, and bear with me, and Elimination Chamber to go away. Just go away for like five, six, seven years. Nobody talks about it. We just have steel cage matches. We do whatever. And then can you imagine the pop? Can you imagine the pop if we never had a, like another single Hell in a Cell match again for five, six years, and then a GM comes out and it's going to be like, it's in Hell in a Cell. Boom! The entire lid of the building will go off. That's what I want to happen. But yeah, cheeky date change. So I was going to be like, hey, if you have tickets, but nobody's got tickets because nobody's got tickets. So I guess just prep yourselves for the Thunderdome. Everything's going to be fun. Next up, Finn Balor was recently speaking to Graham Matthews over at Bleacher Report, and the subject of the demon was broached. Now, if you've been living under a rock for like, what, the last six, seven years, the demon is an alter ego of Finn Balor. It's like a Jekyll and Hyde thing. Like, when a match is so important that he needs to win it, he'll become this evil persona. Sort of like Keiji Muto and the Great Muto. He has like face paint, he's all like evil looking, he crawls to the ring, he's got like fabric dreads. It's just really cool. It's really creepy and it's really cool. But the demon hasn't been around for quite some time. The last time we saw him was in June of 2019 at Super Showdown. So why is that? So Balor actually touched on it. Is the demon dead? No, not at all. He just wants to save it exclusively for high profile matches. And he pinpointed three people he'd love to face as the demon. He singled out Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman and The Fiend before adding that, and this is the sad part everybody, it could be up to three to four years until we see him again. It might come as quite a shock to some of the bigger fans of the demon out there, but Balor said he's just really enjoying what he's doing right now, and that to do the demon as it is right now would just be maybe a little bit of a step backwards. He said, there's a lot of other things that I want to invest my creative juices in, and creatively, the demon takes a lot out of you. It's something that can sometimes limit me as far as what I'm able to do, and right now, I want to just focus all my creative energy on when the bell rings and what I'm doing in the ring. I don't want to jeopardize that right now. I'm really proud of the matches I've been involved in over the last 11 months since I returned to NXT, and the variety of styles I've been able to adapt to. I don't want to jeopardize that for any reason. Right now, I'm very focused on Finn Balor, the Prince. And finally, Jeff Hardy has always been known as a creative, exciting, energetic, athletic star with a penchant for the weird and spoopy, which he's Matt Hardy's brother, of course, he's into sort of weird stuff like Matt Hardy is. But there is one character from Jeff's past that he really desperately wants to get into a WWE ring for the first time. And that character is Willow. Willow first burst onto the scene in TNA and it's quite the departure from Jeff Hardy. It's like all black and white, this huge oversized sharp looking black and white mask, like contacts, it's just proper in like dark clothing. It's almost like a broodier, more gothic, sting-like Jeff Hardy. Despite the gimmick garnering a lot of love from the wrestling community and TNA sort of trying to bring it back a couple of times, it just never really got the momentum that it had the first time. It's also never, as far as I know, appeared in WWE other than the the odd subtle nod here and there. But speaking to BT Sport, who are the WWE's UK carrier, he actually mentioned it. He said, years ago, I used to be Jeff Hardy, and then I'd be this guy called Willow. Willow was kind of my go-to wrestling persona, and that's another dream of mine before I'm done. I want to bring Willow into the WWE universe and see what could happen. I just have a feeling that something crazy cool could happen between Willow 
and The Fiend. Willow versus The Fiend is quite literally a license to print money for many, many wrestling fans. I really hope that they allow him to do this. They at least owe him this. Come on, he's given years of his life to the company. Let us have Willow. Let him have creative control. Just let him do what he wants. Just him and Bray working completely creatively free just for one big match, one big build-up. That would be... Oh, I've just had a trouser accident. But yes, that is your weekend news. Bloody hell, it took me nearly 40 minutes to film this. I am very bad at this. I'll be back in a little bit with Graded. But until then, stay safe and I'll see you soon.